Welcome to module 12.3 and in this module we will be going uh, ahead with the code generation. So, we are now doing compile terms in which we have completed uh, uh, integer constant uh, integer constant expression and unary op term. Now, now we will see what keyword constants. So, a term can be just a keyword constant and what are the keyword constants if you look at there are four keyword constants that we have namely true, false, null, this. So, so when we when we are the compiled term we look for integer constant, we look for unary op, we look for this starting parenthesis and based on those those actions would have been taken. If it does not find these three then it will look if there is this symbol keyword constant followed by some value and slash keyword constant. If, if this is there, then it has to take this particular part. So, the term will be checking for each one of these possible things and if this is one of the, if it sees keyword constant, then it has to do this action. So, this value can be one of these four values namely true, false, null this. So, if you see a keyword constant value slash keyword constant, then if the value is true, then we actually push constant 0 and do a not. So, essentially this becomes 1 1 1 1 which is true right. So, the, so the result always the result has to be in the top of the stack. So, this is how we do that. If it is a false then you just push constant 0. If it is null again you push constant 0. If it is this if we want this then always that this the starting address of this will be in point uh, uh, will be pointer 0. So, I will say push pointer 0 right. So, these uh, four uh, uh, four values will be there for keyword constant and for each of these values we need to dump this code there right. So, this is in green. So, this code will be dumped and at the end of this the result of this keyword constant will be on the top of the stack. So, what we said compile term will leave the result of will generate a code which will leave the result of that particular code on top of stack and that is what we are doing here. Right. So, this is about keyword constant. Now, we will go and see if it is a var name which is not followed by a parenthesis or a, a square bracket or dot. That means, it is just this var name. So, it is not this var name with that expression. So, just a var name that means, it is just an identifier. So, it is something like y right or z or so one of this identifiers. So, what we need to do we have to push the value of that uh, z or y on the top of the stack. So, so how do we do that? So, this is the code push the kind of that variable name and the index of the variable name onto the stack. So, this push will do that. So, it will be push field comma 0 or static comma 0 or whatever. So, or uh, local comma 0 uh, or org 0. So, this will this is this will push the value of that variable onto the stack and finally, the uh, uh, the top of the stack does have this value and where do you get this kind and index search for this variable name first in the subroutine class table and then in the symbol uh, class uh, sorry subroutine symbol table and the class symbol table and then uh, from that you will get this kind and index and if you put this code ultimately uh, the value of that variable will be on the top of the stack and that is what we need. Suppose, I have uh, a var name followed by this uh, uh, square parenthesis right. Uh, so, square brackets then that means, it is an array variable. So, the moment I see uh, uh, the, the square parenthesis I must see an expression. So, immediately I will call compile expression and the result of that will be on top of stack. So, it is something like you know. Uh, 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 a of i i plus 2 something like this. So, this i plus 2 is an expression. So, this compile expression will basically uh, uh, compile this write a code for i plus 2 and while you execute that code on the top of the stack the result of i plus 2 will be there. So, this is at the end of compile expression you will see this. Then you must see a slash expression and then the uh, closing square brackets. Now, you write this code. Now, you push kind and index of a right a is the variable name here. So, if it is an array variable what will this push kind and index to it will give you the starting address of a that we have seen. So, here let i plus 2 be 10 
Now the starting address of A will get, so A will be say some local variable 2. So if I say push local 2, it will give you the starting address of A, let it be some 1000. Now I do an add, so this becomes 1010. So this is the add, add will give me 1010. I push, uh, I pop this to pointer 1. So the dot will basically now have 1010. Now I push that 0. So that is 1010 plus 0 is 1010. So I push the content of 1010 onto the stack, right? And that's what one. So at the end of a of i plus 2, which is a part of an expression term, I need uh, the content of a of i plus 2 on the stack. So I just put push that 0. So the result of this is on the top of the stack. So this is that. Okay. So this is uh, this is how we handle uh, variable name. Now the next thing is string constant, right? So now we have to check for. So it will be looking like string constant. Actually, the string, for example, string constant, enter the number, right? So so if I have say, uh, uh, so if I have say enter the number. <coughs> So let me let me say print int or output int or output int something like then it will have something like uh, keyboard dot input int. Let me just take this keyboard dot read int. Some string will be there. Now this will be reflected as string constant and whatever string read a number in or I can say input a number. So that input the number will be a string here. Now what we need to do is we call string length, we have actually compute the string length. So this input a number will be something like i n p u t say let us say input. So i n p u t the string length is now 5. Right? Now we extract the string. Now what we do is, first we put push constant string length. So I will first put push constant 5 and I will say call string dot new with one argument, this is 5. So this will create a new string of length 5 and the starting address of that will be on the top of the stack, that is what string dot new does. So this will create some new string say starting at 2015. So the new string will be, so 2015 will be on the top of the stack. So the new string will be somewhere in 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay. So this is where your string, so this will be i n p u t, that is what we need to create now. Right? So what we do is first 2015, first it will put everything as blank or and 2020 will be null. So this is how this will do. Now what we need to do is, so this will have created a string of size 5. Now we say push constant of that character. So I have to push this, so, so what, so all these input everything should be stored here as integers, right. So, so there is a one to one ASCII map here, right. So there is a one to one ASCII map, uh, that's, so essentially if I say if I want to put input, what I do here for i equal to 0, i less than uh, whatever that 5, i plus plus, push constant. Now I have to push i, right? i is percentage d. In C, if I put percentage d and I put i there in that printf statement, this ASCII value of uh, i will be put here, right? So that is how we do that. So I put the ASCII value of i n p u t. So what I push constant of that ASCII value of i and then say call string dot append care 2. Why this 2? This 2 essentially means there are two arguments to this function for append care. One is the, star one is the starting address of the string which is already there on the stack 2015 then I am I am pushing this value of i, the ASCII value of i by this statement, right. And now I am calling string dot append care which will take the first two, two arguments on top of this. So what this will do? The string dot append care 2 will do, 
in 2015 string starting at 2015 please append i right so it will go and append i in 2015 right then next this goes on a loop back now i'll push the constant uh, ascii character equivalent to n and again i'll say call string append so what it will do it will just take this uh, uh, 2015 uh, uh, again 2015 is on the tab so it will take this n the ascii equivalent of n and append it to 2015 again i'll get n right and like that i'll keep on doing so i'll be uh, appending in put one after another so this for loop will take each character of the string as its ascii value and call string dot append cat to append it back so and this and please note that there are two arguments one is the starting address of the string and the uh, uh, and the another is the actual uh, value that i need to append so this is what we do with string constant so at the end of this uh, if if the term is a string constant what will be on the top of the stack the top of the stack will have a pointer to the starting address of the string and if you go there the entire string will be stored so that is how we do so this is how string constant is handled right now we now go and check for var name which is followed by either dot or this parenthesis then that means this basically leads to a subroutine call now the difference between the subroutine call that we saw in compile do statement and the subroutine call we are going to see here is that these subroutines automatically will give us a uh, will result in an output on the top of the stack okay all the subroutines so in that case these are all basically functions which will do it right which will return a value on the top of the stack right so 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 one of the thing that we need to keep as i mentioned earlier that if there is a function a os function call like keyboard there are many os functionalities which you don't define like keyboard array string uh, you know sys etc in the do subroutine call only methods will be called for those os routines but in this the the subroutine call originating from evaluating a term functions will be called right so for the os classes like your sys array mem string math etc in the do do the subroutine call originating from do only methods will be called in the subroutine calls originating from term only functions will be called right so th so there is a difference between handling a function and handling a method and now we will see how the subroutine call for the term is going to be handled right so this is very similar to what we have done but there are some subtle changes here and there first you check for the variable name we call that variable as id1 then uh, we we <coughs> we check for the symbol dot if there is no dot then you do this step this step and this step if there is dot sorry if there is dot you do this step followed by this step and then this step if there is no dot then you do these three steps right so if there is a dot then you again check for identifier because this will be var name dot identifier call it id2 check if id was one is in the subroutine or symbol class if i s yes, then id one is a object of some class so so we need to get its kind and type so and you push the kind and type of id one because we need this uh, for the subroutine if no then id one is a class name array so do nothing here at this step then then come here then after that we need to see the symbol uh, this because you have something like keyboard keyboard dot read int some that starting parenthesis so you see the starting parenthesis then you will see uh, uh, expression list 
then you call this compile expression list and it will return the number of parameters and it will also ensure that the uh, the parameters that should arguments that are need to be passed to this routine are that code for compile expression list will ensure that all the ar arguments are loaded in the stack in that order and after that you should see slash expression list followed by this symbol and semicolon right then you come here if id1 is a local or class symbol then you just say call type id1 dot id2 type of id1 dot id2 np plus 1 if it is id1 is of the os routines then just say call id1 dot id2 np this np plus 1 is needed because you are putting this this for that right so now the difference between do while and uh, this statement is this pop temp 0 is not necessary in the in the while statement we need that but here we do not need this. Similarly if it was just id 1 without a dot then we push pointer 0 because the subroutine of the current class pointer 0 then uh, you again uh, check for this uh, parenthesis so open parenthesis then expression list then the number of parameters will come as part of the compile expression list and of course this compile expression list will put the code where all the arguments of this are already loaded onto the stack in that order then you should see slash expression list and symbol followed by symbol uh, close parenthesis and then the symbol semicolon now the code is call class name dot id1 whatever this id1 np plus 1 because this this is there. So, this is what you do if it is not a dotted call if there is a dot call then you do this this and this step and the so the difference between uh, do and this is that this pop temp 0 is removed in all the these three. So, that is the that is the difference ok and so this is how uh, we handle subroutine call. So, with this we have finished all the uh, 15 subroutines that need to be coded and whatever you see on green you need to have basically will be the code that is dumped out ok and this is how we construct the compiler. So, so I hope uh, you all followed this and if you have any doubts please do put on the web, but do not stop this effort it is going to be slightly, uh, slightly uh, you know involved uh, and uh, I have tried to explain as much as I can. Uh, of course, uh, always uh, both of us can improve, I can improve in my explanation and you can also improve in your understanding, but the best thing is that uh, you work, uh, you write the code, you get the code up and that will be a very interesting exercise, you will never regret right and that is very important. So, unless you do this uh, final uh, coding, um, you will never see uh, the josh in this course i would like to like you to end this course with the josh okay so so finish this coding right once you finish this coding your compiler is ready now uh, one of the things that we need to understand next before you even start executing programs is understanding the os interface mm -hmm.